Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, Artist Talk and Poetry Reading, featuring Joe Wardwell, Nakia Hill, and Asia Herrera. I'm Sarah Rodrigo, Public Art Project Manager for the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. I'm joined by my colleagues, Sharon Amaguni, Air Program Manager, Christina Carroll, Communications Director, and Karen Goodfellow, Director of Public Art. The Chief of Arts and Culture is Cara Elliott Ortega. We're very excited to hear Joe, Nikia, and Asiya talk about the artwork for the Roxbury branch of the Boston Public Library. But first, I'd like to give you a short introduction to the City of Boston's public art program and the process that brought us here tonight. The Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture enhances the quality of life, the economy, and the design of the city through the arts, including public art, which we commission with the Boston Art Commission and review at our monthly public meetings, which I welcome you all to attend. Our curatorial vision is to promote innovative and transformative artworks that engage the community, enrich and enliven the urban environment, are driven by a clear artistic vision, enhance the diversity of the existing collection, respond directly to their specific environment, and possess durability appropriate to the lifespan of the work. And my colleagues are going to be putting some links into the chat as well as a captioning link for those of you um, that might find that helpful. Under the leadership of Mayor Walsh and through the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, the city released its first cultural plan, Boston Creates, in 2016. The plan called for more support for Boston's arts and culture ecosystem and identified five specific goals. In order to fund commissions for public art, the city created the Percent for Art program. The Percent for Art program is a critical part of the planning process and addresses goal four of the plan, to integrate arts and culture into all aspects of civic life, inspiring all Bostonians to value, practice, and reap the benefits of creativity in their individual lives and in their communities. And that brings us to the new artwork for the Roxbury branch of the Boston Public Library which you can see an early rendering of here, courtesy of UTL. The truth that's become apparent as this project developed is that none of us work alone. This project is the result of many partnerships between the Office of Arts and Culture, the Boston Public Library, the Boston Facilities Department, other city partners, and UTL. The architects for the renovation of the branch, who always envisioned an art piece for the main library space, and of course, the collaboration of these amazing artists we have with us here tonight. And so the commissioning process began with public meetings hosted by the Boston Public Library and other city agencies to talk about what the neighborhood would like to see in the Roxbury branch. From those meetings, it was clear that there is a strong desire for public art, and in particular, public art that speaks directly to what it means to live in Roxbury. The city then incorporated the community's desires into a call to artists. Through a competitive proposal process, Joe Wardwell was selected to interview by an artist selection committee made up of arts professionals, many from the Roxbury neighborhood, and the Art Commission awarded him for the project. And I also would like to just say a quick thank you to David Leonard, the president of the Boston Public Library, um, who may be watching us tonight. Uh, thank you, David, for all of your support for visual art and artists in Boston, um, for arts and culture's work, and for this project in particular. And now I'd like to introduce Joe Wardwell. Excuse me for a moment. Joe Wardwell is currently an associate professor of painting at Brandeis University. 
in Waltham, Massachusetts, where he founded the Brandeis and Siena program in 2015. He received a Bachelor of Arts in Art History and a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Painting in 1996 from the University of Washington in Seattle. In 1999, he received a Master of Fine Arts in Painting from Boston University. Currently on view through 2022, Wardwell has a large scale wall drawing commissioned for the renovation of Building 6 at Mass Mocha in North Adams, Massachusetts. His work has been exhibited at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, and the Decordova Sculpture Park and Museum in Lincoln. And Wardwell's work is in each collection. In 2012, Wardwell was a recipient of the Massachusetts Cultural Council grant for painting and was recently awarded the Distinguished Alumni Award from the School of Creative Arts at Boston University. In addition to numerous group exhibitions throughout the region, he has held solo exhibitions in New York, New Haven, Boston, and Seattle. In 2020, Wardwell will exhibit in New York with the Frosch and Portman Gallery in the Lower East Side. His work is represented in Boston by the La Montaigne Gallery, and he lives with his family in Jamaica Plain and has a studio in Dorchester. Joe, uh, welcome. <laughs> Great to have you here tonight. Um, Joe will be walking us through his process and the design for the new artwork for the Roxbury branch in just a moment. But first, I'd like to introduce his collaborator, Nikia Hill. Nikia Hill was named a Boston Artist in Residence in 2018 by Mayor Walsh. She's a writer, journalist, and educator who focuses on empowering women to use writing as a tool for healing and resistance. Hill is the author of two books, Water Carrier and I Still Did It. Nikia, welcome. Um, AT6 has been an instrumental part of this project and I was hoping you could share a little more about it. Absolutely, good evening everyone. I hope um, that our talk finds you well during these challenging times. Um, we really appreciate everyone showing up um just to engage in our community in such a unique way online so i appreciate everyone's presence here today um as sarah mentioned my name is nikia hill uh, i'm a roxbury native a writer and also an educator and i also uh, am the writers room director at a nonprofit organization which is ironically located right in Roxbury in Eggleston Square and 826 Boston is a nonprofit youth writing and publishing organization dedicated to empowering traditionally um, under-resourced students ages 6 to 18 to find their voices, tell their story and gain communication um, skills to succeed in school and in life and I have the privilege of working there. I oversee um, six of our writers room programs that are housed in Boston public schools uh, right here in our city. Um, I'm so excited to be partnering with um, artist Joe um, Boardwell. Uh, we started working together at the beginning of um, the year um, in partnership with um, my wonderful students, 826 Boston's Youth Literary Advisory Board, which is a new um, youth leadership, youth employment program that 826 Boston has launched um, this year. And I would like to introduce um, one of the YLAB uh, that's short for Youth Literary Advisory Board. We'll be using that acronym throughout tonight's talk. Um, but I would love to introduce um, Asia Herrera to talk about 826 Boston's um, Youth Literary Advisory Board. Yes, Asia, hey, thank welcome. you. <laughs> you can go ahead. Yeah, oh, please. I, I just read your bio very quickly. You're a poet, activist, and 826. Um, Boston Youth Literary Advisory Board's teaching artist. Um, Asia is also a finalist for the City of Boston's Youth Poet Laureate Residency. We're so glad to have you here Thank with us you. tonight. Um, and I'll move along so you can talk a little bit about YLAB. Of course. YLAB is a student-driven program. Students are selected in the fall and work throughout the school year as artist leaders and peer editors. They meet weekly to work on a final project. This year, the final project included a podcast and a forthcoming book publication. Um, as a YLAB student, we are passionate about civic engagement and taking power and credit in society for our generation and beyond. Um, and of course, I know. <laughs> So, um, Asia, would you get us started um, with the first taste of this artwork that we're talking about tonight by sharing your poem with us now? Of course. 
Um, this poem is titled Worlds Collided. Home to me is a piece of sidewalk between two little worlds, corner store jams and Stony Brook shade and Jackson Square squabbles. A mosaic of languages and mimicry, Center Street and Nubian Square. My world is worlds collided. My heart resides here, and even if this place were to change, I would not stop loving every corner and crack, and we are all the colors that are named. Hands tending soil, dirt under fingernails, the heat of bodies, smell of earth and exhaust, sweet nostalgia and the bitter contemporary accumulation of my ancestors' footprints, ink to paper. It's the space between worlds, sidewalk cracks that births life. Abolitionist writings, paint to plaster, the belly of revolution, home of picket signs and uprisings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing and hand this over to Joe to talk about the visuals. Okay, uh, just hang on a second. So um, can you see all see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Asya, for reading your poem. Um, I'm really grateful to have you part of the project. And uh, thanks to everyone for joining this evening, um, especially like Nikki said, during these challenging times. Um, I'm humbled and grateful to be working on this project with Nikia, Asya, and the other Y Lab writers, as well as the City of Boston Office of the Arts, Office of um, Arts and Culture, Boston Arts Commission, and the Boston Public Libraries. Um, first, I will tell you a little bit about me and my process, and then share with you the designs and concepts that we have come developed around the past several months. As an artist living in Boston, who's at a studio on one side of Roxbury or the other for the entirety of my professional career, this project is very dear to me. Uh, my current studio is just at the end of Norfolk Ave and East Cottage Street, and I ride my bicycle uh, by the Roxbury Library almost every day that I go to work. Uh, this, current exam this current slide is an example of one of my paintings. All my work is a combination of landscape, text, and abstraction combined through a layering process that I'll briefly, ble briefly introduce. And prior to 2017, I was primarily what I would call an easel, easel painter. And it was in uh, and I'd done a few large scale projects, but it was really with the commissioning of the Mass Mocha project that um, um, Sarah mentioned in North Adams that I had the opportunity to create a really large scale piece and develop the process that I now use for all of my work. And this is a quick, very quick little video um, that shows that process. First, I begin um, with a blended background uh, painted across basically like kind of like a large uh, wood block print basically put, a, put on a wall. Um, I have landscape that's then through a large vinyl stencil that's attached to the entirety of the wall and um, slowly peeled off. Uh, most of the people that are in there are my family, as Sarah pointed out earlier, there's no labor laws for not all of those people. Some are just sort of friends uh, as well. Very laborious process. And once the landscape is um, totally completed and removed, from the, uh, the, the wall, large text is then applied with another stencil over the top of that uh, on the entirety of the piece. On top, after that, we paint an abstract abstraction or an abstract design on top of that. You can see that being put on there. And then the last and final layer is an additional layer of text, smaller text that's silk screened or additional stencil that's put on um, as you saw at the end. And this is another example. And then finally, that last layer of vinyl is repeat, peeled off. You can see as it's being peeled off, then it reveals the combination of the layers of text and the landscape below. So it's kind of elaborate, a very elaborate process, but allows for a lot of content to come in to the piece. And these next few slides are just a few images of the completed piece, Hello America, um, 40 hits from the 50 states that's still on view uh, at Mass Mocha through 2022. Um, you can see it's 150 feet long. And there's a few details where you can see the smaller text and the larger text um, working together. 
Um, next, I'll share with you just one uh, other large scale project. And I'll talk about the library design that we have. Um, this was another uh, wall work that was completed in 2018 for the Facebook offices in Cambridge, Mass. Um, this was utilizing the same process. However, I did not use the second layer of text and instead made the um, stencils more complicated and abstract design more elaborate. Um, to, there was not a lot of room to back up from the space, so I wanted to make something that was uh, visually dense um, as people walk through the space. Um, in thinking about uh, our plans for the Roxbury Library project, there were some key concept designs that I wanted to um, make sure that we worked with uh, or aim towards as far as the goal was. One was making sure that the content of the piece was sort of sourced around um, the neighborhood like Sarah mentioned. Um, the other was to collaborate with other community members, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a moment, but um, it was something that was uh, relatively new to me. And, um, and then the, the, the next part was to really design to, with, to work with this space so that my goal really was to have a piece that was kind of designed to be situated with inside both sort of, if you think of ripples in the pond, sort of the, the area with inside the physical space of the li library, and then kind of echoing out um, through the larger, uh, larger community and larger uh, landscape of Boston in, in general. Uh, immediately upon visiting the space, this is when I first came in there, still during construction, I was immediately awestruck by the um, huge expanse of panorama of, of both like Util's ability to, to hang on to the, the brutalist architecture of the original library design, but also just really open up to the, the, the light and the landscape of panorama that went along the Warren Street and Courtyard, as you can see in this image. And so my idea is that the vision of the space was to um, really mirror that kind of movement um, that I saw in the panorama along these concrete uh, or these alcove panels along the concrete um, framed by the concrete structure of the original library. So um, our plans basically are to create three, three pieces that would move across the um, entirety of the piece or move through the space of the stacks and be, be really sort of mirror and echo with um, what was happening on the Warren Street side with um, and just really filling up that space and nestling into that space with just with a lot of content and color and the abstraction um, built up. And here now I'll kind of break down how I thought of a uh, each layer of relating to why it would be um, sort of designed specifically for this, this the place. Um, originally, so one, first I'll talk about a landscape layer where I want to source all of the landscapes from different viewpoints in and around the uh, Roxbury neighborhood. Um, initially, I thought that I would use one landscape that would be like a panorama moving through the three pieces, but after discussions with Nikia, kind of thought it would be more interesting and more meaningful and impactful if there were more what we'd say iconic viewpoints from in and around the neighborhood of Roxbury, such as this here seeing um, from the Rock Roxbury State Heritage Park, uh, looking down into downtown Boston. So I began riding my bike uh, around and photographing different views of, um, or different Boston areas with inside Roxbury. And then, so then each panel would start with the blend like you saw in the uh, Mass Mocha video that I showed earlier. And then that landscape would be um, stenciled over it. And so here you can see this is the same view as the um, a section of the view from the Roxbury Heritage um, State Park. And then over this, um, we would include the contributions of the writing that um, both Nakia and uh, Asia and the other um, YLAB writers contributed to the pieces uh, about Roxbury and the community, and Nikki and us, you can talk a little bit more about that in the um, as we go along. And the uh, writings would be included in their entirety. So this is how each um, writer wrote the poem and how it's, it appears um, in the text that they sent. And then the next layer uh, would be the abstract layer, which would go on top of that. And here's where I really saw um, 
linking to the structure and the architecture of the library in a couple of different ways, what I'll talk about. First, in the next layer, I was thinking of how um, these diagonals, can you guys see my cursor? Let's make sure, okay, thank you. Um, how the color, first talking about the color, the color is related to how the color with inside the library, how you move through this general stack section, you move from purple to blue to green, uh, lime green. And I thought it would be nice to echo that on the other wall as you go across and use that, that same color relationship that's in the library as a way to connect to the um, pieces up that you would see up above on the walls. And then this is an early color variant. So um, not these original colors, we've kind of, we changed from there. But then I thought the idea of the, the, this design relating to the diagonal baffles that crisscross across the ceiling of the central stacks and then creating these vertical columns that would then relate to the vertical, the original cement vertical columns uh, of the um, original library. Um, so that's how they sort of like that abstract layer. The next, next I would talk about the um, collaboration and probably the most <laughs> exciting part of our uh, design. And I would say for me, this has actually been um, the re most rewarding part of this experience is collaborating with Nikki and the Y Lab. Uh, writers by far. They've been uh, incredibly generous with their work, supportive of the project, helped shape the project, and have honestly changed who I, who I am as an artist and the artistic and my what I value in the artistic process. And I don't know if Nikki, if you want to say anything at this point. Yeah, like I would say that the way that we actually came together and met was kind of serendipitous. Like, um, we met through a colleague of mine at 826 Boston, like Joe, I don't know if you were like on your bike or taking a walk. They just like happened to meet like in the woods somewhere, <laughs> like just randomly. Um, and, um, you know, uh, my colleague, I guess, mentioned me, yeah. Joe came, visited 826 yeah. Boston, and it was, it's just like, naturally unfolded it wasn't anything that was like planned it just really like we met we spoke um a couple of times it just really just connected um he shared about his work and like what he wanted to do and i share like my background and like i was born and raised in roxbury for like the most transformative years in my of my life until i lived there until i was about 14 years old um and you know, I was overseeing our youth literary advisory board, and the students they were publishing a book, and um, they were launching a new podcast. And um, another co colleague of mine, who was a writers and coordinator at the Jeremiah E. Burke High School, um, who was also a poet, um, and and um, her work will also be featured in the exhibit too. Um, she came in, Rashonda, and she led um, some creative writing, poetry workshops for the students um, and just led them through the writing process. Um, and of course, we were focusing on like home, what Roxbury means to all of us. And, you know, we just workshopped, the students workshopped and they created the piece centered around this project and what their different connections um, are to Roxbury. Um, and Asia lives in Roxbury currently now, so it felt just it was it was a really amazing it was a great experience especially because we're in a pandemic so like i've been meeting with my students every week virtually um and yeah it, it, it was uh I, and i and i'll hand it over to asia to really talk about like i can speak i'm speaking from an adult uh an adult's perspective an educator's perspective um but i'm curious to know like what how was that experience for you because you guys have been writing, you were writing all spring. We were publishing the book, we were just wrapping up because they went through like all the submissions and everything. And then we're like, we have this other project and you guys have to like 10 new pieces of writing. They've been writing since December. But um, if you can talk a little bit about what that was like from your perspective. For sure, um, I think, you know, you're right. Like we were working on that book project um, and that was consuming a lot of our time. Um, and then um, you told us about this project. Um, and I think we were all just excited and flattered, really, honestly, that someone wanted to, you know, put our work somewhere permanently. Um, but I think, you know, 
huge props to Rashonda for coming in to do the, that workshopping because um, at first I kind of was like, oh, how do I write about Roxbury? And I've, I've lived here my entire life. I've lived on the same street my whole life. I just, I've always been here, right? Um, but I guess maybe it's hard to write about something that you're very familiar with almost. Um, and so when I, I actually left Roxbury for a little while, I left the state for the summer. And when I came back, I suddenly had all of these ideas um, of, of what to write um, and about how much I would just miss this place, even if, even if it did change. Um, and that kind of just happened like as we were like driving into the city for the first time after being um, away, like driving home and just revisiting all of these familiar streets that, that we, you know, live around and have driven down like a thousand times. And suddenly I was like, wow, I really miss this place. Um, but I think, you know, how much people have pride in and love um, Roxbury is something that's, that's beautiful and really important. And I'm just glad it's going to be captured. Um, and for everyone to see. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you both. I think that, uh, you know, for me, it's been such a learning process to be able to, you know, I think before this project, I really um, focused on, um, you know, utilizing texts that were other people's words, but kind of reinforced my own worldview. And it's also, it's been really um, amazing to see how much to be able to see through other people's eyes to incorporate other voices into this project. And it's very, anyway, it's very meaningful for me. And so then um, I'll quickly go through some of these other slides where, uh, you know, there'll be a second layer of the text put on top of the abstraction, um, which will make sense in a moment, because when it gets revealed and these be the large text, will uh, the vinyl text will be removed like in the slides that I showed you with the um, Mass Mocha piece. They'll be revealing that the, there'll be the large text, which is the first three lines of Nakia's poem. And then through the two different layers, you'll see the combination of the, um, all of the contributions of all the writers who are part of the project. And uh, just by the way, the black lines represent what um, these, this will be built, the whole image we built up of individual panels that will be assembled onto the wall. Um, this is, oh, and this is the piece on the left-hand side of the stacks in the upper left, and you'll see in a moment. Uh, then this is the central panel that will be on the Claire Story wall, including um, poems across the total. And you can see the, the, and then the various viewpoints of Roxbury, and this will be on the right-hand side of um, the, Claire, uh, the central st stack space. Um, and this is an example of, just a, uh, a mock-up of what um, one of the poems would look like inside the piece. And this is about, this would be roughly about five, five to six feet high in, the, in that, that poem. So give you an idea of the um, scale in which the, the writer's work is included into the piece. Um, this is the three panels and the first three lines of Nikia's poem um, in, the, in how you would see moving through the space. And then this is just, this is a digital mock-up of what the central piece would look like inside the Clara Story um, wall, or on the Clara Story wall central side piece, looking in the stacks with the books in the library, more completed um, view of when the library is done. And then this is what the three pieces would look like in its entirety moving through the space. So you can see that kind of nestled um, into the space, sort of wrapping around um, the architecture and filling it with color and words. Um, and images. Um, and lastly, talk about some of the things that, um, as you can see, we're talking about our project uh, and the collaboration. Um, we've been brainstorming different ways of thinking of what, how the project could live beyond the, um, the physical space of the library and it could, the, the piece and the work that we've done be, be um, in, in another form, another for, format that could live in multiple sites at once. Um, and so we're thinking of working with, because I work a lot with silk screen and, and um, text, as you saw in the other piece, the, um, in the Mass Mocha piece, we're thinking of creating another, from the images that we're, that I've been gathering from around Roxbury, is creating a, a portfolio project or, or an artist book type project where we can collection of these images, silk screened onto um, paper and then 
um, printed with uh, silkscreen the writer's work, the YLAB and Nakia's work on top of the um, images of the silkscreen. Um, and this is the image you saw earlier. Here's another example from that I showed you from the earlier um, J.B. Hunter piece. And then finally, um, this is uh, Nakia's piece uh, with a sort of iconic view through um, from Mission Hill. I think then Nakia is, is kindly going to read her piece as well. Great. I'll give you guys a little background about my piece. Like I mentioned, I, um, Roxbury, although I currently do not live in Roxbury, I always claim Roxbury because I was born and raised there. And um, my piece is entitled The Nubia Notion. And um, when, I dis when I agreed to partner with Joe on this project, um, I, that was something that like I just truly did not take lightly. And I'm like, well, if we're going to work on a project that will be centered in a library, um, the Roxbury Branch Library is a library that I um, remember going to borrowing books growing up. So like it's, this is like, huge and like a serious um, honor for me to be a part of this because I just remember going there. I used, I grew up in Madison Park Court. So when um, I start in this, this piece is, I feel like maybe I'm a hundred percent done, but like even last week I sent updates to Joe because I kept on reworking it and I, especially now, like I really miss like Roxbury is my home. So it's entitled A Nubia Notion. And there was a store, it's no longer there, but it is for those that are from Roxbury. Um, Nubia Notion was a, a store that I would go to, it was black owned as a child. I would go there to get penny candy. My mom would get incense and cleaning supplies. And then they had like a record store back in the day. And I remember seeing like New Edition and all of the like Drew Hill and celebrities growing up. And um, I would get little, bangles from there um, with like elephants and Nefertiti heads. Um, so I really just, this is an ode to um, my community, to Roxbury. And it's, um, as you listen, I go through like just some memories um, that we know gentrification is a real thing, but the beauty about having, some, some of these things that I'll mention are still there, like street names, stores, people, places um, are thankfully still with us, um, but I'll, I'll just jump in. Uh, so, a Nubian notion. Pride wrapped around us like an emerald necklace, high up on a mission hill, protecting, excuse me, projecting a bright beam of light, clinging to the essence of our communities. Sweet scents of incense danced in front of store fronts. Sazon sounds of bachata and merengue blaring loud from bodega speakers in Edelson Square and Nubian, and Nubian Square. The sight of brass Nefertiti bangles found home on melanated wrists. We bow, we pray, we cling to teachings from the Holy Quran and Bible. We cling to teachings from our ancestors. Roxbury. We dance from juve morning, doused in sweat, baby powder, and paint from Humboldt to Blue Hill Ave. Black power stained the corners of Warren Street from marches, from parades, from blood left on sidewalks signaling the lives lost to violence. Memories of Malcolm X and Melina Cass spray painted on brick walls. African roots derived from the coast of West Africa, Kachupa. We lived in a bowl filled with twisted tongues, stirring up a melange of languages. Soul food rested on the plate served at the silver slipper, feeding the appetites of Chuck Turner and Liz Miranda. Beauty was groomed in Drain's house of style and Mr. G's. Body by Brandy taught us how to care for our temples. Subways once flew in the sky, now silver lines, transporting us back and forth to and from the shores of Fogo, Santo Domingo, and Port-au-Prince. Each street signifies a piece of culture in our history. Memories etched up and down Madison Park Court, Ruggles and Lenox Street. 
Roxbury, you will never be burned down to the ground like the Ferdinand building. You will forever be the fabric of who I am. You will forever be the fabric of who we are. Thank you. Tia, thank you so much. I think I stopped sharing now. Yeah, so I think we can open this up to questions. Um, if people have questions for you, and I have a few myself. Um, if people are tuning in and they want to ask questions and make comments, if you're in the Zoom webinar, you can do that in the chat or you can raise your hand. Um, and if you're watching along on Facebook, you can make comments in the Facebook um, comment section or ask questions there. But I will start off um, by asking all of you, essentially. Well, I'll, I'll start with something, Joe, that you said when you were talking about the landscape. You mentioned how you rethought the focus after discussions with Nakia. And Nakia, you mentioned how your work was, was influenced. Um, and Asia did as well. And I was, I'd love to hear more from each of you about how your different creative processes influenced and inform, were informed by each other. Uh, I could go first. Basically, uh, one of the things working with Nikia, she has a very gentle way of, of kind of saying like, nah, you should do it like this. <laughs> and that's, uh, it was very, it was like, so, and I was like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> so it was very kind of simple. And I think that that's, um, you, you know, I think that, it, it, you, you know, I, I sort of rattle around with different ideas that I think I should do. And I think that it's it's been really great developing this project to have um, someone who, who can say like, nah, you should do it like this. And that was pretty, that's, I mean, that's, and I was like, well, that's a good idea. And so then that sort of kicked off kind of where, you know, I think of it, um, I'll just add one last thing is that I think that a lot of times what has been really helpful in this project is that sometimes when I'm trying to make this piece as thinking about ways that I can design the piece to make it to its you know, most impactful. I think sometimes I, I, I stay too much in the visual realm and I'm thinking about like different ways I can make it more dazzling or th do this or that. Whereas I think that it's been really helpful to work with um, Nikki and the other Y Lab writers where it kind of helps keep me connected to the other, so many other elements that need to be incorporated in a piece like that. And I don't really know how I would have, I, I wouldn't have been able to kind of make calls like that had it not been a collaboration. Yeah, and I would say like, you know, I, I, I'm a serious writer and also I really, um, I'm very careful about my, um, the way I represent my community um, in Roxbury. So like, and, and even with like collaboration, like people will come to you and they want to collaborate and I'm really hesitant because your name is attached to things and like, I mean, I have to make sure that I make Roxbury proud but also like understanding like after researching Joe and learning more about him and talking to people that know him because I definitely did my research before I signed up but um and he's a serious artist like he teaches at Brandeis his work is in Mass Mocha so like I'm a writer he is a visual artist those are two different mediums so it was like we were I was learning from him and also his approach is very collaborative too and I'm like I'm a writer. How can I like give him feedback about his work, like his works in museums? But um, I felt comfortable being honest. Like when my people in Roxbury, when they step into the library, like are they going to be able to? And this is where that conversation we had, Joe. Like because he shares like different iterations, and like what do you think? And I'm like when I'm just picturing myself and community members walking into this space like there are particular landscapes and streets and corners and like that you will be able to see this is my home and you know that's where like some of the feedback came from and then he literally went rode his bike and took photos more photos to what he had already had already taken so i really appreciate that openness to be 
just to keep it real, to be like, you know what? I, I think it's really important for people who are from Roxbury, when they read our poems, when they see Joe's artwork, that it, that it resonates with them. And it's not like just another piece of art placed in the community, like it's for us. So that, that was really important. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm just really happy. And it, it's, it's, it's been, it's just felt like a, it's been a, an, an, an honor to work and also to bring um, my students in, you know, I'm in, in my thirties. We got to get the young folks in because we got to make it fresh and timeless um, for the community. Um, yeah, I think also, you know, thinking about my own piece, um, it was super helpful to see Rashonda and Nakia both model um, poems um, that, you know, were almost like an ode to Roxbury and just captured Roxbury in such a beautiful way. Because as I was saying um, prior, I had struggled a little bit with writing about Roxbury. And I think part of that was because um, living in Roxbury, it's just like you see, you know, you see it and you just, you live there, you know, there's, you don't feel like there's maybe much to write about. Um, and, you know, I had some poem, but I just didn't have a whole poem and I didn't feel um, as if it was complete. So, you know, it was, I was glad that both um, Nakia, Joe and Rashonda um, all were like patient with us throughout the entire process of us writing our poems, because I think a lot of us were um, daunted by the task of writing a poem that was going to go on the wall <laughs> in the library. Um, and so we were kind of hesitant to put our pen to paper about it. Um, and, and that wasn't just true for me, that was definitely true for some of the other um, students involved. Um, so it was good that everyone was like patient, like, nope, don't worry, It'll, the poem will come to you. It'll come eventually. Just keep looking and observing, you know, your surroundings and your city. And that was really helpful and beautiful. That's excellent. Uh, Asya, you actually answered another question that, that I had, which is about challenges that you encountered through the process. Um, and it's, it's very resonant that it's hard to write about home because you're there all the time. And the fact that you left and came back and then got re-inspired is really lovely. Uh, but were there other challenges that you encountered and could all three of you talk about maybe how you worked through those, through this design process? I would say the challenge for me was the pandemic, like being on lockdown. Um, because I just miss it so much. Like I currently live in the South End and like I am totally social distancing. So like, you know, I get inspiration by being out in the world. So like if I'm at a cafe and I am eavesdropping on conversations, people watching all the things. Um, so like, I just, I haven't gotten on the silver line in months since the pandemic hit to even like go to like Dudley Cafe or, you know, go to frugal bookstores, anything like that. So it was really, I, I definitely have missed home and I felt disconnected from, from Roxbury because, you know, of safety. Um, so that was the biggest challenge for me. So like the, my first draft of this poem is not what it is right now just because it was just so far, but like, you know, it just came and I just reworked it. But I, I think it's really important just having those, trying to charge those memories because they're so, they were distant at first, but then they started to come late at um, night in the shower. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I remember this. So I did the work go. help you reconnect a little bit, even though we're in the pandemic? basically? It did. It really did. Definitely. Huh. What, what a lovely silver lining, I think. Silver lines. Uh, thank you. Joe, do you want to talk about any challenges that you oh, sure, have? Sure, yeah, I can jump in and say I think that, um, you know, I think, you know, I definitely think the pandemic, you know, I think that when we first, like, hammered out some details at the 826 Boston site in Eggleston Square, when we first met, it was like mid February, like early February. And so it was like this in person connection. I'm really grateful for that because it really um, solidified, 
you know, it's just sort of our relationship. We could feel the vibe and it was just a really good first meeting. I walked out of there. I was like, this is awesome. This is a great idea. And I'm really grateful that was in person because we got that impression. And then, and I had these dreams like, oh, this, like, all the Y Lab writers are going to come to the studio and we're going to like make all this stuff. And I'm going to see it. And I really want, and I'm hoping that we'll figure out other ways that, um, that, that I really wanted to have people would be engaged all the way along the way. And I have to hand it to both Nikia and uh, Asia and the other writers is that they've kind of helped me be connected by inviting me to their Zooms and letting, like having me present, um, you know, where I'm at in the project and my ideas. And so like, that's like, they've really helped keep me grounded. And, but I would say also even the silver lining to me is like, you know, and I'm, especially I was like, Last uh, spring, I was like riding to the studio because I had to teach from the studio, teach online from my studio and riding through Roxbury and everything's closed down. And the poems actually just really brought it back to life. I think he said to Nakia one, one time that it really reminded me of kind of like her poem reminded me of riding down Dudley Street in the summer and the sun and the sun's going down. And, and like, any, anyway, just so for me, it just kind of helped me actually feel connected and um, I noticed in my bio there is still like a show <laughs> that did not happen in New York in May <laughs> that I probably have to update. And I think that um, there's been a lot of challenges, but actually this project has actually been my bright spot. And, and so there has been a lot of challenges with the project, but in general, for myself and my artistic process, this has been the like thing that's kind of kept me going. Uh. Thank you. There was also another discussion topic um, that Nakia had offered, which I thought was really interesting. And Joe, she was wondering if you would talk a little bit about how this project had been different than previous projects you worked on. I think you've touched on that a few times, but do you want to expand a little bit more um, on how this is different than previous work that you've done? Me? Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you <laughs> the, the uh yeah I mean I think that um you know I think I told myself before that I collaborated with other people and then I think that actually actually collaborating with other people really kind of helped clue me into like like I said about like really um trusting other people's work to be a part of my work and them trusting me to treat it with respect inside a pro inside a larger project um, I think that a lot of times I think I've, um, this is a different project because I see it's very civic oriented in my brain and it's, and it's an area that I know well that I'm in all the time. And so I feel like a different responsibility than, than, than um, you know, something that's maybe in a gallery setting. And so it's, it's really, um, you know, or in the, there's just a lot more added responsibility that that I actually really appreciate. That, you know, it's not something that's um, you know, when you say there's a lot more added responsibility, it, it sounds like it's a burden, but it's not like that. It's kind of like um, it's good. It's a good kind of like duty, if that makes sense. That might be a little weird, but that's that's kind of you know what I mean. It's not and it, like like Nikia said it. You know, I feel, in a different way, I feel that in in a similar way. Um, like it's a really important project for me in that in that regard. Yeah, you like have to, I, I felt like I have to hold it with care. So like I had to put my, I had to be very mindful of putting my best foot forward um, and keeping the community community in mind. Because when I write, I usually, write to respond to what's going on in the world, but I'm writing for Roxbury. I wrote this, this poem for Roxbury and mine and like the work that we've been doing, like when I, when they enter the, the new space, the newly renovated beautiful space, um, I want them to feel like it's for them. So you guys like, you just have to be so careful with it. Um, Yeah, it's, it's site specific. We talk a lot in public art about site specificity and it's, it's really a meaningful term. You know, it's not just sort of an architectural term, but it's a very specific 
community and end users and there is responsibility there. Yeah, when I think of Roxbury, like, I think it's like such a regalness about it. And just like, you know, you feel like, I feel like a queen. And when I see, you know, young boys, young men, and like, they're kings. And I, I really want them to, I want to honor that, that regalness about the Roxbury community. Yeah, and live up to the community's expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's Lovely. Asia, do you want to add anything? And I had a question for you too, which is to talk a little bit more about what this process has been like for you. I think this goes along with what Nikia was just saying, um, you know, penning a poem and seeing your work incorporated in an art installation that will live in the Roxbury branch um, permanently, which you spoke to a little bit before. What's, what's that like? Um, again, I think we were just, all the students were just so flattered that this opportunity was being offered to us. Um, and I'm a poet, among other things. I sometimes dabble in um, like illustration and visual art. So I'm not a foreigner to visual art. So working with Joe was very interesting because I think, um, you know, when I first saw his art, I was just so curious. I was like, how does this work? <laughs> Um, and so, you know, of course he explained everything. He came into our um, YLAB meeting and was talking all about his process. Um, and it's funny that Nakia and Joe both mentioned how they met in person because it made me realize I've actually never met Joe in person ever, <laughs> um, oh my which is, is <laughs> yeah. so odd um, when you really think about it, but the world is so weird now. Um, Something but, to look forward to at some point. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, but I, that didn't impact um, how we were able to collaborate um, in, in any way, shape, or form um, because Joe was so flexible with coming to our meetings um, and just him watching our process, but also showing us where he was at with his process helped also inspire us. Um, and, you know, not, not many of us knew what the inside of the library was going to look like or like what was really going on there. Um, so it was very helpful to see all of that and to hear him speaking on like the architecture and all of that because it just kind of reminded us, like centered us sort of um, and reminded us like where this piece was going. Um, and yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. That's wonderful, thank you. Um, so I'm going to throw a question to all of you, and this is one of my favorite questions, and it's going to be hard to pick. What is your favorite thing about this new artwork? You, you can only pick one thing. What's your favorite thing about it? I know, poor Joe is like, what? Um, <laughs> yes, your favorite thing, and I'm not going to be more specific than that. I think, I think I can, oh, but only one. <laughs> but I see. <laughs> well, about the physical artwork, about the physical work, very yeah. specifically the physical work. I think the colors, um, again, like I'm a very, I'm also like a very visual person as much as I love like words and taking apart the English language and putting it back together again. I think visuals are so, so important. Um, and when I saw the colors, I was like, oh, it's gorgeous. So I think that's probably my favorite thing. I'm still thinking of mine. It's uh, okay. Am I going to force Nakia to go first? Or? <laughs> of course, I'm a writer of the words, yeah. like the yeah. words jumping out at the different people that the thousands of people that will come in and out of the space um, that will, you know, I, when Liz Miranda walks in there and sees her name, um, when, when kids see the, or like, you know, my family members and community members, when they see the names of their streets, um, yeah, that, that's the, the words definitely is like what stands out for me. Yeah, I, mean, I would say, I just have to say the collaboration because it's the most unique thing for me in the, in the piece. You know, I think it's just really been um, 
you know, I've told Nikki a bunch of times, you know, and in Asya in the interview that we did, and like, um, I just think it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's a, you know, as an artist, it's like you spend so much time trying to kind of like define what your work is about and your own personal vision and your own worldview. And, um, you know, I never really intended, you know, my work kind of evolved organically over years and years. And um, I never really set out with the idea to incorporate other people's work inside my work. And I just feel grateful that at this stage in my career and this point in time and this place and this moment in this area that I'm in that, that, that I have the opportunity to, to serve. Thank you, Joe. Um, and I see that uh, David, it looks like David Leonard, the president of the Boston Public Library is here. And uh, David, I don't know if you'd want to speak, but I can read your comment that you were at the branch this morning and the walls look bare right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't wait for the installation. I think we're all, we're all feeling that way. It's very exciting. So thank you I'll so much. Fast. <laughs> All right, and I have one, one last question for all of you. And that is, and we've touched on this throughout the hour, but what do you hope the Roxbury community will receive from this project? Again, pick one thing. No, I won't make you pick one thing, but <laughs> if you could speak to that a little bit. Uh, do I gotta go first again? Um, no, you don't have to, but you are unmuted and up, so. Okay, okay. I'll just, I, I mean, I think that um, that's really hard. I have so many aims. This is the first percent for the arts project I've ever done, the first um, public art project I've ever done, and first large collaboration. So it's, it's a lot of um, working parts, but I think that, um, uh, you know, I think that what um, Nakia said about something that I really want to create something that ha that just really kind of fills up the space nicely that, that has a majesty to it that that um, you know visually just visually connects and and you know tries to tries to uh, I'm not very articulate all of a sudden um, the I the idea of I think just something that that really feels like it's unique, special, it's made with incredible care. And you can tell that there's all these different contributions. And then you could something that, you know, part of my work with all the text is I really want to kind of create something that would encourage a viewer to spend a long time with the piece, you know, and that's, that's what I think the contributions someone could spend hours looking for the stacks they could look up and spend an hour looking at the painting and reading that and I think that to me is kind of what I hope for. I would say more life. More life absolutely. Roxbury is so vibrant and they already give me so much life and Boston as a city so much life. Like I just want to want them to feel like this piece is giving back to them. I, I want to like bounce off of what both of you said. Um, and also something that Joe said earlier about how he wanted to mirror the architecture and the panorama of windows opposite the piece. Um, and I love windows. <laughs> I think windows are great, especially big windows. Um, so I, I want this piece to bring light into the space. Not that there already isn't natural light, but a different kind of light and a different kind of love. Um, and again, to just sort of be brought to the community with care and with joy and with, I hope, a lot of hope. <laughs> Wonderful, what a perfect note to end that on. I just want to thank the three of you for this incredible work. We all can't wait to see it. Um, and thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Um, I just really appreciate it.
but a, a wonderfully positive experience this is <laughs> in what's been a, a challenging week for everybody. So I want to thank my colleagues um, for being here and taking care of so many things while we were having this conversation, uh, Sharon and Christina. Thank you, Karen, for being here. Thank you to David again for his support and for all of his, his team and our colleagues at the library. Um, and thank you to all of our partners and thank you to 826 Boston and the Y Lab uh, for all the fantastic work. So and thank all of you for joining us out there in the world. Um, we look forward to sending out some more updates soon and someday all of us will meet in front of this incredible work at this incredible library um, in this beautiful new space by UTL and, and get to enjoy it in person. So thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you guys all. And thank you to my collaborators. Thank you. Thank you. Be well, everyone. Thank you so much.